Hello and welcome to a new episode of Your Parrot. Today I'm in the second largest zoo in the Netherlands, up in the north. And I want to present you lots of nutrition facts and we will see not just parrots today. Oh, they quite fast. Nectar. Then let's get the stuff clean. Yeah. And they have a very distinguished digestion. <laughs> Morning everybody, let's go into the Loriki house with Rick. Alrighty, we arrived inside the, uh, the Loriki and the birdhouse and let's get started to clean, right? Yeah, let's go. <coughs> So cleaning is very important when you keep lorikeets, right? Important, yes. Because um, mold can grow fast, especially with wet nectars. We have two versions, we have a dry formula and a wet formula, nectar. So these lorikeets currently get only nectars, right? Only nectar and fruit at the moment. I think it already. Okay. So it's very important that you clean the lorikeet feeding bowls and the water bowls on a daily base, especially in summer. It's nearly advised. If the temperature is above 20 degrees, that you clean it and change the food twice a day. Otherwise, mold and aflatoxins can very easily grow, and especially the lorikeets can then become a yeast problem in their crop. About the lorry key. It smells so good. Yeah, it is. It really smells so mm -hmm. fruity. Absolutely. That's why we have added papaya and apple inside. Great source of sugars, fructose, sucrose, everything the lorry key needs, including nice spirulina for minerals and for a shiny plumage. Oh! And the good thing is, it doesn't sink to the ground. Not even one single percent. Now once we mix our lorry key soup, like I call it, we have to wait about two to five minutes that all the ingredients settle with the water. That it might get soluble with the water, but it looks very nice to me. I don't know if you see it right now here. Lovely lorry key soup. Whoa, shit. <laughs> Barista! For real. <laughs> First they get some water. Since lorikeets eat nectar, they don't need water, but that's a big, big mistake. They always need to have fresh water and especially lorikeets need it very fresh because they bath a lot inside in the water. So we have to replace it at least two times or even three times a day, depending on the temperature, depending how much bird, how many birds you have in the aviary and so on. Are you ready? Of course we are ready. Rick is very convinced about our food. We just saw it the last minute and he said, okay, let's try it already with our visitors because it has to work because people want to interact with lorry keys in the big, how do you call it, landing area? The lorry landing, uh, lorry landing. Lorry landing in, in, the, in Dutch. So it's a big aviary of lorry keys, which we will go right now outside to show you their big aviary. And we prepare in the back some little cups of lorry keys a soup, lorikeet nectar, that the visitors can come inside 
Watch the birds very closely and interact with them. So while we are uh, talking here about lorikeet breeding, keeping the temperature of inside and outside aviaries, I couldn't refuse, of course, to take a sip of my own lorikeet. Mm. Nectar. My gosh, that's like a, a, a super smoothie for my day to start. So now we try the lorikeet feed directly inside. Let's go outside in the aviary and try with a little cup if they even come straight away in the morning without any visitors. So guys, we are inside the lorikeet aviary. Let's get them a bit of a snack. I hope they are still hungry because they enjoy the lorikeet nectar very well right now. Yeah. Right, Rick? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if they are hungry. Let's try it out with our new nectar. They love it. Look at this. I come a bit closer. Did you see how they eat it? I'm so proud. You know why? Because we have put so much energy in our bird food, in our pet food as well. So much energy, so many years of researching. You know, I have been in Australia in the wild to watch the wild lorikeets, the rainbow lorikeets, and to study their nature, to study their diet. And I'm so proud that these little guys over here simply love it. Look at them. They, little, they have little brush tongues, they call. And these tongues, they take out the pollen out and the nectar out of the blossoms in Australia and everywhere else also in Asia. They're quite loud and they have a very distinguished digestion, very short. They take no fibers at all in their diet, so that's why they have to take a huge amount of liquid food to digest it regularly and very fast. And they have developed quite a system. Come over here, go on, mate. Come. <laughs> they have developed quite a system to, uh, let's make it directly, to shit very fast and powerful to prevent any damage on their plumage. Okay, um, we have over here some uh, fish uh, ready for our uh, humble penguins. Uh, we have different fish, we have the herring and we have the spread. Um, and most of the time when we're going to feed, uh, we're gonna hold the fish. Um, and of course, watch for our fingers because they can bite really, really hard. <laughs> Let's get to the penguins. I didn't know that we go there. I'm very surprised. And Patrick, will you join us? Uh, or do you don't have yeah. time, right? Or? Yeah, I can. Uh, <laughs> I can. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the Dutch are masters when it comes to fish, right? So, of course, they have penguins. What do you think? So, we have nice herrings. It smells very fresh, actually. So, now we prepare ourselves for getting into a very dangerous penguin aviary. Because I heard that they are breeding, that means, ooh, let's see, they can be a bit bitchy sometimes. <laughs> Is it right, Patrick? Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay. I have a lot of scratches. <laughs> let's get to the penguins. Now I have to hurry up because we have to go to the penguins. Patrick gets angry already. Or the penguins, let's see. There's a little rabbit. Okay, Rick just decided to leave us. I don't know how we should hold the camera, but we will find a place for that. Thank you, Rick. Uh, we have a lot of rocks over there, so maybe you can uh, yeah. put the camera out here. <coughs> oh, they're so sweet. Well, they look sweet. <laughs> Little demons there. Yeah, yeah. We can uh, sit over here. Okay. Oh, they quite fast. Oh, wow. They, the penguins are quite shy, so we have to to move very slow. But they have to get used to uh, the zookeepers. But the breeding season, is the breeding season already in, uh, in full mood? They start now, huh? Yeah. yeah. So they start now with the breeding season. Of course, they get a bit suspicious too. 
It was a great experience feeding penguins. This was actually my first time and thump up. So now it's time to walk to the Macaw Avery. Let's try for the first time our popular and famous vital pellet, which you have seen in our in our YouTube videos, in Instagram, and it was always amazing and still um, for me it's it's a wonder that every single bird that gets fresh the pellets and every single bird that never have seen the pellets before will eat it straight away. Let's figure that out today too. The high protein content in other pellets can be problematic for liver disease and also for the kidneys and also in terms of the aggression of the parrots. So in our case we have limited the protein amount in our vital pellets. Why? Because simply birds don't need that in aviculture. Even in the nature, if you look at the protein content of figs, of guava, of mangoes, of any other tropical fruit, they have nearly non-protein. Also most of the berries don't have any protein inside. So why should we feed the birds so much protein? And with our vital pellets it's a good mixture of everything. We have a nice um, percentage of protein of about 11.3 to 11.7 percent. This enables you to breed but also to keep the bird in a nice shape without overdosing protein. So it's not always healthy what some marketing company tells you. Simply try it yourself. So everyone, now we are at the big Macaw Center here in the Hotel Dierenbad in the second biggest zoo in the Netherlands, which makes me very proud. Here are inside rescued macaws. We have military macaws, we have green winged macaws and also the blue and gold macaws. They were fed a pellet of diet before, but they were not so quite happy with the protein, fat level and in general the recipe of the product. As you know, we manufacture simply natural, healthy and premium pellets. And today we want to try out how the flock of the macaws you hear it in the back eat it. So be aware that it can be a bit louder as normal, so I don't guarantee you can hear me very well. Let's go inside in the big Aviary. As I told you, it can be very loud in here. Normally they wear amazing earplugs and this for a good reason because the birds can be extremely loud and if you work the whole day long, you definitely need those. Okay Rick, um, as I said to you, we will feed the first time our pellets. They never, never, they never had it before. before. You know, see the pellets, they, they, they smell good, they look good, they don't look too shiny, they don't look too... They don't have those weird colors, they're just normal brown and brown. Yellow. So I'm very interested if they want to eat it. Because you see all the macaws, they want to eat, but I'm not sure if they want to eat this. Because they have never seen it, they always get their normal pellets. So now, let's see what happens. And as I thought, Rick, what about the feedback? It's amazing, right? I, I, I want to prove it. I did not put any fruits in it. I did not mix it. No, no seed mixture inside, not that we fake you. The birds, every single bird ate it straight away without knowing the pellets. It's simply amazing. This is a new, completely new strategy for zoos, for breeders, for pet lovers. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. It 
surprises me always the same time on a new base how macaws or in general all parrot species love our pellets. Pellets have been in the past a pretty hard diet to convert birds. Most of the seed eating birds are obsessive with the sunflower seeds with nuts and they don't eat hardly any pellets. And we have made it with our recipe very clear and we have had a statement in the market that we are probably one of the easiest convertible pellet brand in the world. Every single straight away eats it and this makes me incredibly happy. Yes, they made now an applause. How it, does it smell? It smells like celery. Celery, exactly. Yeah. We have a lot of celery and carrots inside our herbal blend. The herbal blend is absolutely fantastic. It smells good. <laughs> Let's try it. So in this huge aviary over here, where you hear also the flamingos, lots of macaws are flying around us. And you think, hmm, macaws and flamingos together in an aviary, is that working? Yes, it does. Because normally macaws do not go on the ground much, right? They are fed inside, they don't get any contamination from the flamingos and they do very well in this huge aviary here. And to be honest, I really like the concept of the zoo, because it's something different. <laughs> now they get a bit crazy. The birds are not only here to breed, they got the birds from private people to rescue them. They have rescued these birds. Some of them are traumatized. Some of them are very well, but just that the owner died and passed away, right? So here in this aviary, we have a big flock of mixed macaws. You also see hybrid macaws. I know many of you are not a fan of hybrid, but they are part of the RV culture. Here, it is not focused to breed any hybrids. Even if they mixed up here together, they take the eggs away and leave the parrot simply live their life here in peace. So, we are now visiting some bird trainers in the auditorium, you say, yeah? Yeah. Like in a free flight arena. Let's go inside. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Finally, the new pellets arrived. Yeah. Smell them. That's with celery and carrots. Oh, yeah. It's not fresh. Yeah. It's not, not like so chemical like the no. other ones. So here the birds have a different life than in other zoos. Why? Because normally birds of prey, they get hold on small and uh, short leather straps, right? And here they have the opportunity to decide whether they want to fly and train or not. So let's get to the big aviaries of the macaws. They are just, I don't know, four or five meters high. Look, they eat it straight away again. Come nip it. So the trainer is very happy about the pellets. Because why? These are free flight birds, right? 
and there's always been a problem when you feed them. Why? Because they get the whole day like seeds and uh, sunflower seeds and nuts. Ooh. Now, when we change their diet to our vital pellets, they get all the vitamins, minerals, the um, uh, supplements Ooh. like we have inside the amino acids, fruits, vegetables. And while training, they get very nervous and excited because they know they get nuts now. So they will work much better and much more with the zookeeper than ever before, right? And you guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Lovely macaws. Huge aviaries over here and I like the concept. They do, they can train when they want to. Look, very nice birds. If they don't want to, they don't have to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have to. They don't have to. Huh?